Hello and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks and in today's lesson I'm going to demonstrate three and a half ways that you can produce a report to average test scores using criteria. Let's take a look at the raw data over here. So we have student test scores. What we've been asked to do is produce a report that first will average the scores for the entire class and then using the criteria of gender. We want to see the average for the uh, test results for only the male or female. So that's the criteria. So there are three approaches that we can take. Many people will say, well, the best way to approach this is to produce a subtotal report, and that's fine, but there are several gotchas along the way. I'm going to come back and I'm going to demonstrate how to produce a subtotal uh, after I run through the other approaches. The second approach is to use the average if function. So the average if function will evaluate criteria. Now, that's a terrific approach. However, it only works in Excel 2007 and Excel 2010. So if you don't have Excel 2007, 2010, you can't use the average if function. It's not available. So that's going to bring us to the half solution. What do you do if you are using Excel 2003 or earlier? Well, one approach where you can produce averages using criteria is to use the D average function, the database average. And again, I'll show you how this works. So that's two and a half. Now, the third approach, which if you haven't guessed, is going to be the approach that I suggest, is to create a pivot table report. We can produce this report with about six clicks of the mouse, and we do not have to write a single formula. All right, let's go back and work through these one by one. With a subtotal report, it's easy to produce, but the first gotcha step is you have to remember to sort the data by the field that you wish to produce the subtotal on. So we want to see at each change in gender. So that's going to mean that we need to go through and sort this column. So now we have all of our female records grouped together. We have all of our male records grouped together. Now we're ready to create the uh, subtotal. So select a single cell, and I'm using Excel 2010 here. This is work, will work the same way in Excel 2007. From the data tab of the ribbon, choose the subtotal command. This is going to open up the subtotal dialog box. So here's our second gotchas. We've got to make sure that we're using the correct choices in the dialog box. So we want our subtotal to break when there is a change in the value in the gender field. In this case, yes, we do want to use the average function. And what do we want to average? We want to average the score field. So click OK. And now we have our subtotal report, and we get an outline. So it's easy enough to collapse it. Here are the averages for the overall class, the average for the male students, the average for the female students. Now, it's a lot easier in Excel 2010, but the third gotcha step is that when we want to copy the subtotal reports, that we choose the visible cells only. So there's how to produce a subtotal. Let's take a look at the second approach. If you have Excel 2007, Excel 2010, for the criteria of the female students and the male students, I recommend that you use the average if function. So here's how the average if function works. It's going to say, take a look in a range. So in this case, the range that we're looking in is the field for gender. While you're looking in that range, find the records that match this criteria. So you see over here, I've pointed to the cell that has female. Over here for the average if, I'm pointing to the cell that has the male. So when you find the records that meet this criteria, female students, then what I want you to do is use the average function to average only those records that match that criteria in the score field. So it's very simple to use. Now notice that I do use uh, dollar signs around the range. So I want to make sure that when I copy this formula over that the range that I'm looking in stays absolute. I don't want that column to move over. The criteria that I pointed to, again, notice that I used a mixed reference. I wanted this to be anchored in row 2. 
and then I use the dollar signs to surround the range for the score. So now if we don't have Excel 2007, 2010, what can we do? So let's use the half selection or the half approach, which is the database average. So over here, notice I have the same uh, basic test results and I use the average function over here to get the average for the entire class. In order to use the D average function, what I did is I copied over the field header because I'm going to need that in the criteria. I copied gender over here twice. So let's take a look and see how D average works. So with D average, first we define the database. And in this case, we want to make sure that defining the database includes the header rows. Now, the field that we want to search in for I criteria, notice that I'm using over here the score. So the field, not my criteria, the field that I'm going to actually average is going to be the score. So I point to the header over there. And then the criteria, here's your next gotcha step. Make sure that you include the header, the gender, as well as the criteria female. So over here, include the header as well as the criteria. So that's how we can use the dAverage uh, function. Now, for my final approach, I'm going to recommend that you learn how to how easy it is to use a pivot table. So one cell selected in the data set, Insert tab on the ribbon in Excel 2007, 2010, pivot table, and our data is defined by the marching ants, the marquee around here, and I'm going to create the pivot table alongside the data. Click over here to build my pivot table report. Now I have the pivot table template and I have the pivot table field list. What I want to do is I want to see the criteria for the gender. Now, it's very simple in Excel 2007, 2010. Whenever we click a field that contains text, it automatically goes into the row labels drop down area. So here are the unique values, female and male. What I want to do is I want to average the score. Now, the score field contains numeric data. By default, it goes into the values drop area, and by default, it uses the sum function. Several ways that we can change this. When we want to change the uh, function that we use, rather than sum, we want to use average. Just right mouse click any of the values, and now over here, you see with the summarize values by, just change that to be the average. So there is our overall average. Here's the average for the female students, Here's the average for the male students. Now, one other gotcha with the pivot table, when you want to format the numbers in the field, don't format the individual values. We want to format the field. One way to do that, right mouse click, come down here to value field settings. And again, notice that we have the average function here come into the number format. And in this case, we'll take a number with two decimal places, click OK. And also, if we wanted to change the field heading over here, average scores, we could easily do that. And there you go. So there is your pivot table. So the pivot table is so easy to use. And if you want to learn more about pivot tables, I have great news. I have produced one hour uh, in-depth instructional videos that you can download for only $9.95 each. And I've created unique recordings that you can download if you're using Excel 2003 or earlier, Excel 2007 or earlier, or Excel 2010, $9.95. Here's what you will learn in that one hour. In addition, you also get a copy of the Excel workbook that I use in the video lesson, and you also get the opportunity to download a step-by-step -step instructional manual, manual. So it's very, very simple to learn uh, pivot tables and to get the most out of pivot tables. So there you've seen the three and a half approaches that we can take to summarizing our data using criteria in Excel, and I'll look for you in the next lesson.